Hello everyone, this is Jason from Grip Tape. In the last video, I introduced you to the Grip Tape Comfy UI nodes and told you how to install them and get started. In this video, we're going to tackle one of the most common nodes that you're going to find when working with the Grip Tape nodes in Comfy UI, which is the agent. In this case, I've got a run agent node, which will run this prompt, it says, hi, my name is Jason, and I get an output, which is some text that says, hello, Jason, how can I assist you today? This is using OpenAI's GPT-4.0 model, which is the default one when using grip tape nodes, but you can change that if you would like to. I'll be showing you that in a little bit. Just to demonstrate how common this agent node is going to be used, if I zoom out over here and come in and take a look at this, here you can see a bunch of different nodes, all of them involved with the agent in some way. In the middle here are a couple of create agent nodes. So this is the run agent that I showed you before. This is the create agent, which gives you access to a number of configurations and tools and rule sets that are available. We'll get into all of these things in other videos, but they kind of define how the agent is going to work. So for example, rules will give you access to behaviors to say like, hey, be always kind and friendly, but keep your responses brief, but not curt, be sarcastic, whatever it is you want, how you want the agent to respond. We have different configurations. This is how you control which model we're going to be using. Again, the default is OpenAI's GPT-40, but you can use other things like 3.5 Turbo or 4, or even Amazon Bedrock, Google, or Anthropic. Uh, if you have access to those models. You also have access to different tools, for example, a calculator, date time, file manager, a knowledge base tool. If you're a member of Grip Tape Cloud, which I highly recommend you are, uh, you can actually build a knowledge base full of information like your Confluence data, Google Drive, or things like that, and be able to have an agent access information in those knowledge bases in order to decide what to do. Very, very handy. Uh, you also have a web scraper and web search. All of these are available as tools which can then be used by the agent doing various tasks. So here you can see some of the tasks that are available, a tool task, which will just execute one of those tools and run it, a tool kit task, which will allow you to bring an entire series of tools to be able to use. Or, so for example, you could have a web scraper tool and a file manager tool and then tell the agent, hey, can you get information from this web page and then save it as a markdown file on disk? And the tool kit task will allow it to say, oh, in order to scrape the web, I need to use the web scraper tool and then in order to save it to disk, I'm gonna use the file manager tool. So toolkit tasks are very, very handy. You have a basic prompt task, which is essentially the same thing as the run agent task over here. And you've got the text summary task, which will allow you to take a giant body of text and just summarize it very quickly. In addition to that, we also have image generation tasks. So this is a image, uh, create image from text task, and then also image description task. And what you'll notice is consistent is that each of these, the create image, the image description, the tool tasks, the agents themselves, they all have an agent as an input field, which means you can create an agent, give it these configurations, and then pass that agent into one of these tasks like that. And this tool task, for example, will use this agent. You can also take the agent and instead of passing it into a tool task, you can pass it into another run and the agent will maintain the context of the conversation which is extremely handy to be able to make sure that it understands what's going on. The other cool thing you can do is if you're interested, there's a grip tape expand node where you can take an existing agent, expand out the rule sets or the tools, for example, and then give those to another agent in order to work with its behavior. So for example, if I have one agent running, which has a certain amount of memory and I've got another agent and I go, you know what? I just want to use the tools from this agent in this other agent. You can basically grab the tools, drag them in here into another create agent, but then pay, take the output of this agent and pass it into that agent. And then this agent will now get these tools that the other agent had. It can get a bit confusing, but it's pretty powerful. We'll get into all that later. The main thing I wanted to focus on today was how do you create an agent? What does it mean to take an agent and pass it into another agent run? And how does the input string work? How does the output string work? So. Basically, we're going to focus on just the core aspects of the agents, and then we'll get into all the other fun stuff later. Let's go ahead and start by clearing our view, clear the workflow right there, and we're going to create our first agent. So if you click with the right mouse button and you go add node, grip tape, agent, grip tape, run agent, this will create that grip tape run agent node for you. And then we can type in a string like, hi, my name is Jason. And if we want to display the output for this, you can go right mouse button, add node, grip tape, text, display text, and pipe the output into the input. This basically will just display any kind of text output. 
And if you queue the prompt, you will see what you would expect, which is, hi, Jason, how can I assist you today? Let's first talk about how do we deal with the agent coming in and the agent going out. So whenever you do a run and there's no agent coming in, this will create a brand new agent for you. If I take these two things and I copy and I paste them down below right here. In fact, I'm actually going to offset them a little bit. So it's very clear with the flow of data, what is and what is not happening. And I say here, what is my name? And then I cue the prompt. What you'll see is it says, I'm sorry, I don't have access to personal information. So here we've got agent one, which is created from scratch because there's no agent coming into the input node. And here we have another agent because there's no agent coming into the input node. If we want this agent here, if we want this run to have the context of what this agent had, we just pipe this agent in like that. So now what happens is we say, cue this prompt, and this will say, your name is Jason, how can I help you today? So I think I've mentioned this before, but basically what's happening here is because there's no input, this agent, this, this node will create an agent from scratch. It will then take the output of that and pipe it into this one, and it will remember the entire history of the conversation. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You can just keep piping agent to agent to agent, and the entire history will keep going as you, as you work. Okay, the other thing I wanted to point out was the input string, and what does this mean? So anytime you have an input string here, that means it can take any kind of text that comes in, and it will add that text to this prompt and use that to evaluate. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna delete these two just to show you right here. And let's say I wanted this agent to respond uh, in a haiku. Like I want it to respond with a haiku based off of whatever this text is. I can create a new string which feeds into this. So I'm gonna go add node, grip tape, text, grip tape, create text, which is basically a node that just is text. And I'm gonna say, uh, say hi to me, as a haiku like that and i'm going to take the output and i'm going to put it in here into the input string and then run that and now what you'll see is that it responds as a haiku hello there jason waves of words blah blah blah, blah. so what's happening here is this text that is written here has an output just outputs text into the input string and then what this node does is it takes whatever the text is here in the prompt and then adds the input string after that and uses that to do a run. So essentially what this looks like is this. If we ignored that one, we'll just put it off to the side there. This is basically what's happening is you're saying, okay, hi, my name is Jason. And then it looks at the input string and then throws that say hi to me as a haiku in here. Just to prove it, say talk like a pirate to me and we'll cue that say there we go so that's how the input string works so you can take an agent you can give it another agent so let's go ahead and copy these paste them we're going to take the output from this agent we're going to throw that in there what's my name cue that and it will continue. All right, you be Jason if memory serves you right. What's your next command? Okay, so just to summarize what we've learned today, you can create an agent. You can pass agents from one node to another. You can add input strings, take the input, throw that in there, and it'll basically add it to the prompt. And if you want to see the output from an agent run, you use the display text node to be able to see what the text is. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the create agent node and how we can have a little bit more control. Specifically, we're going to look at the configurations and see how you can use other large language models besides OpenAI to be able to drive your agent. Thanks very much. Have a great day.